Okay, so uh, welcome. Um, sometimes you're thinking about something and you get an idea and you're like, wow, I'm on to something. That's why I started my website, I'm on to something.com. Notice the Monta, the way we spell Montessori is in there. I'm on to something.com. Uh, there you can find blogs. I have some of my uh, blogs from MontessoriMat.com up there right now, and I'll continue to write new stuff. You can find video logs just like this one. This is the second one in the series. Uh, you can find books that you can purchase um, that I need to update and add some new books in. And you can uh, search through webinars. I do have some webinars for sale where you can earn your professional development credit hours. Um, we do it uh, with... We do it by the, um, we have very cheap webinars. You can get it for as little as $8. Check it out now. Uh, you can get them on sale also um, if you buy the whole package of six webinars that are up there. So uh, check it out. It just takes a day or so for me to get you the links and the uh, certificates. If you want to see the webinars and don't want to have a certificate, you can do that too. And you even get a discount for that. So you can just watch it if you aren't interested in the certificate. So um, welcome everybody. Today is a very fun topic that I'm gonna tackle that everyone asks when they first get into Montessori. They want to know what is the difference between AMI and AMS? And I will tell you, I will tell you which one's better for you, okay? I will, I promise, well, sort of. What I'm really going to do is I'm going to give you some basic information give you some things to think about, give you some things to ask when you go around and visit these places, just so you have a clearer idea of what to do next when deciding. Because if you look online, what's the difference between AMI and AMS, and you're not going to find anything really useful for you. So hopefully this information session will help. Um, and I'm going to do it with a calming background, just so no one who is really adamant about either training program gets upset. <laughs> I hope I don't present it uh, that way at all. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to touch you, I'm going to teach you three acronyms. The first one is AMI, which is the Association Montessori Internationale, Internationale, eh? Sorry, my, my, uh, my Italian kind of went out on me there and I didn't even say it right the first time. Uh, but it's basically the Association Montessori International is what we call it in the United States. Um, AMS is the American Montessori Society. And then MACT is the Montessori Accreditation Council for Teacher Education. These are the three big names you're going to see when you first start looking into Montessori training um, that you're likely to see at least. So this is, um, it's important to cover these. And then I'll start off with AMI and AMS and then I'll get into MACT, all right? Because it's a totally different thing. Um, so AMI and AMS are two of the biggest Montessori programs uh, really in the world. Um, AMI was founded in 1929 by Maria Montessori. Um, in 1972, they started AMI USA, USA which is the American branch. <clears throat> um, just found on Wikipedia, they have 64 teacher training centers in 32 countries. So um, quite wide, widespread around the world. Uh, AMS was founded in 1960 by Nancy McCormick Rambush. Um, they are international with their teacher training programs. I could not find a quick answer when I put this together of how many teacher training programs they have, um, but they're, they're in many different countries as well. Um, so it's not just in America where you can find their training centers. All their programs are accredited through MACT. Um, I'll get to that later. Some AMI programs are accredited through MACT, some aren't get into that a little bit later. Um, but don't worry about what MACT is yet. It's just a little piece of information uh, that pops up. So uh, there are many stereotypes you'll see when you ask the different, what the difference is between AMI and AMS. These are sort of the big ones that people say. Um, <clears throat> and these aren't necessarily true, okay? <laughs> That's why I call them stereotypes, all right? Um, AMI, People tend to say AMI is not flexible um, and it's too rigid. And uh, you know, that they're you have to do it exactly this way is sort of the 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 running joke with AMI people. It's like you you haven't learned any other ways to do things, right? 
At the same time, the running joke with AMS people is, hey, you just could do whatever you want in the classroom, right? You just learn to do worksheets, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, some training centers do teach that, um, which is not good. If you see that, run away from it right away. Um, but um, so the, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, the training, the perception is that AMS just kind of is wishy-washy where AMI is exactly how Montessori does it. Um, one thing you can say is AMI tries to hold more to what Montessori said and did, where AMS does recognize that there's, I'm trying to think of how to phrase things, so I'm not pointing out any bias right now, but AMS tends to recognize that there are, there is a lot more um, developmentally in, in child psychology that isn't just Montessori, um, that fits into Montessori well. Does that make sense? So that's really where a lot of the stereotypes come from, um, is that thing right there. Um, AMI tends to claim that uh, a lot of people with AMI <clears throat> tend to claim that all their training is identical. If you go to this AMI center and that AMI center, that's going to be exactly the same. Not really true. Same thing with AMS. That they tend to say, oh, just every AMS teacher training center is just kind of like, yeah, whatever, man, whatever you want to teach. And it's just, you know, a free for all. That's not true either. So again, these are stereotypes that you're going to encounter when you go online and you say, what's the difference between them? That's not true. Um, there are AMI trainings that are, um, that are, uh, well, I'll, I'll say it cause I'll say about AMS also. There are AMI trainings that I would probably find horrible and you would find horrible too. There are AMS trainings that you would probably find horrible and I would find horrible too. There's excellent AMS trainings that's like going to nail it and you're going to leave feeling perfectly prepared. There's perfect AMI trainings where you're going to leave feeling prepared for the classroom. <clears throat> it's just, you know, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It's just, um, <clears throat> oh, voice, please don't die on me. <clears throat> okay, it's there. That's better. I didn't want to have to kill the video halfway through. It's just, uh, these are stereotypes that you'll find. Don't take them too much to heart. Um, still look at the training. And I'll give you tips of what to look for in training coming up. Um, another thing is another stereotype is that all AMI classrooms are exactly the same. Not true because every teacher is different. Another thing is AMI has just this, yeah, just every AMS classroom is different. Another stereotype. Again, not true. All right, not true. <laughs> These are just things that like people just tend to generalize and then it totally misses the point. Um, so uh, you're going to see these. I, I want to bring them up just because you will see them, especially on online forums or, you know, comment sections on Facebook. You're just going to run into these all the time. Uh, don't take too much stock in it. It's not true. Any of it. It's, you know, there are good AMI teacher training centers. There are bad AMI teacher training centers. There are good AMS teacher, teacher training centers. There are bad AMS teacher training centers. Just depends on who's running it and whether it's a good fit for you. We'll just leave it at that. Um, so where, see, I don't know if you see the recording in the same spot, so I'm gonna have to move it to see, uh, to see the whole PowerPoint. Um, so now where are we? Well, they're best buddies now. AMS and AMI are best buddies. Well, not totally, all right, it's sort of. Um, really, they, they generally as an overall thing have just put aside their differences that they're, they're not talking about that. That's not, are you AMS or AMI? It, that's a, like that's slowly becoming a thing of the past. Um, both are working towards the same goals. They realize they have the same goals. They realize they're trying to build up Montessori. They're trying to build up excellent teachers. And so, yeah, a lot of these differences are gone. Um, there's still some things to consider that we'll get to, but a lot of these differences are just gone now. Um, so that gets us to what is MACT. MACT doesn't do teacher training. They accredit teacher education programs. So that's a, yeah, that's, that's a, people are like, oh, I want to go train with MACT. And they look at MACT and there are all these training centers. They accredit teacher education training programs. They don't, um, they, they don't run a program themselves, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, I, I had someone explain it to me. I, you know, uh, like the teacher training center is in charge of um, doing 
a lot of things like setting the curriculum and they still have to follow a certain guidelines that MACT has too. They have to have a certain amount of hours of different courses and a certain you know, time together and things like that. Um, so they still have to follow that. But MACT actually sets up these rules that um, to help um, accredit it and help establish it as a um, valid teacher training program and one that's going to really prepare teachers. Um, so that's what they do. Um, many program, oh, uh, okay, so I, I misread something for a second. But many programs that they accredit are not AMS or AMI. Every AMS teacher training program is accredited through MACT. Some AMI ones are, um, and other individual programs or maybe even university programs, I don't know, um, are accredited through MACT. You can check out their website. I'll put a website link at the bottom of this video um, if you get a chance to catch it. All right. Um, MACT accreditation is not required for it to be a good teacher education program. You got to stress that. I don't know the, all the different teacher education programs. So I, and I'm not going to research them and find out which ones are good and which ones aren't, because that's up to you if you're looking for a program. I can't speak for it. I can speak for my own training, but I can't speak for anyone else. Okay. So, um, you know, that's, that's, I gotta, you know, just say, check them out. You know, they have a, it's other options you could look at. Um, so some things to consider when looking for a teacher education program. The first one is why do you want to put yourself through this nightmare? <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work. The funny thing is I've had people who, the, you know, they finally go ahead and get to decide to get training. They've you know, been interested in Montessori for years. I keep telling them every single conversation we have, I tell them at some point, this is going to be a lot of work. And the reason I do that is because after they do it, they come back to me and they say, why didn't you tell me it was so much work? <laughs> I want to make sure. I, I want to say, tell me one conversation we had about you getting your teacher training program where I said it wasn't a lot of work. It is. So, um, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. So, you know, the question is, why do you want to do it? Um, most people do it because they want to become a teacher. Um, and then you have to think about what age you want to teach. In Montessori, there's infant and toddler. That's one certification. Three to six is another certification. Elementary is another certification. And they often distinguish lower and upper elementary. So six to nine and nine to 12. Not always. Um, I don't think AMI does. AMS does that. A lot of other training centers do that. Not all of them do. Um, there's, um, there's adolescent, which is also sometimes split up. And then you have um, administration. Maybe you want to take a uh, administration, school administrator course, right? So the question is, why do you want to do take this class? Uh, are you looking for it for homeschooling or for just tutoring somebody? Are you looking just to play with the pink tower? If that's the reason, I could tell you just buy a pink, pink tower and play with it. Don't spend all this time and money on everything. All right. But your reason is going to be very different. Um, if you are looking just to homeschool your child, um, you might not want to take a couple years off work and take a whole year training course uh, and then take, you know, spend a year in the classroom um, just so you can teach your child who's going to outgrow this a year after you take all this work, right? So maybe just an online course that doesn't offer um, a MACT accreditation or doesn't offer any in-person face-to-face uh, -face training at all, maybe that's ideal for you. And maybe there's something smaller. And by smaller, I don't mean less quality necessarily, just in terms of how much work there is, how much time and money it's going to cost you and how uh, widely it's accepted if you're going to become a teacher. If you're going to become a teacher, you probably want the better training. So the first thing you have to figure out is why you want to do this. And that's going to dictate a lot of the decisions. Uh, you know, you might not want to go through a whole AMS program if you just want to learn more about Montessori. You know, there might be better options. Well, nothing wrong with doing that, though. I'm not taking anything away from that. Um, so um, another reason to consider this is where, where to take it and where you are. Um, do schools in your area only accept certain credentials? Some schools are like, ah, we only take AMI teachers. Um, some places like Cincinnati, they have a lot of really, really good AMS teacher training programs in the area. So if you can get 
in there, um, people are already familiar with them. Um, they say, oh, you trained at, you know, you trained at Xavier University, um, you know, or one of the other programs there. And so they ought to, ought to already know a lot of the schools. I'm just speaking Cincinnati because I know it. A lot of the schools already know these places really well. And it might just be you have a lot of connections and might be able to just get your foot in the door at schools easier. Um, so what you one of your first steps, you probably want to go to some schools in your area, go to observe them, go to talk to the, you know, to the administrator or even some of the teachers, see where they got their training, what they liked about it. Um, what they didn't like about it. Um, see um, if you are starting to notice a pattern of, hey, all these people are getting their training at this place. That's a good place to go if I want a job in this area. Um, then go see the training centers, um, see what they have to offer. Bring your hard questions with you. Um, and schedule, we'll talk about one that was brought to my attention late, or yesterday when I talked about this. Um, so yeah, bring your, uh, bring your hard questions, ask them, what the difference is between AMS and AMI and let them explain it to you if they're AMS or AMI training centers. Ask them what's unique about their training center. Um, ask them where people tend to get their internships um, you know, when they do this. Um, so go in and meet with the teachers, meet with the administrators if you can, and you know, tell them before you go in, hey, I'm thinking of getting my Montessori training. Do you mind if we talk about that after I observe your class? I think most Montessori teachers love talking about their training. So, um, you know, go ahead and ask those questions. I'm sure most will want to answer you. Um, some places, uh, you know, especially in small towns, like a small town that has one Montessori school and no teacher training center for 500 miles, they might want you to just do an only online course if you want to work there. And they might be interested in you because you're interested in Montessori in a small town. And that's hard to find sometimes. So um, they might be looking for someone who wants to just come in and take an online course. They'll help you with the rest of it. You know, like there are just a million different situations. But I say start, I always tell people, start with your community first. Find out what's offered. Find out what um, the training is to get to those places, especially if you want to work in a school. Um, but you also have to look long term. Um, do you want to do teacher training in the future? Uh, you know, one of the things that you need for AMS um, to do teacher training, you need uh, three years in-class experience. You should work a little more. You should push for a little more, but three years is what they say. Uh, a minimum of three years with the age level that you're teaching. You need, um, you need a, a Montessori certificate from either AMS, AMI, or another MACT accreditation body. Last I heard and last I talked to people, they're not taking online training. They're not counting online training courses as, um, as uh, actual you know, teacher training courses to be able to teach, um, to be able to educate teachers. Um, that may have changed. I don't know. Um, I've, I've been out of the loop on that for a few years. And it may have changed now that because of COVID, maybe they <laughs> realize they had to do a lot of online stuff. So I don't know how much that's changed with them. I, you can check that out, okay? Uh, um, if teacher training is your goal in the future. Um, for teaching with the universities, you need an AMS or you need a Montessori credential plus uh, at least a master's degree. So, you know, that's another thing. Maybe you want to take a master's degree Montessori course and you get both at the same time at the university. It's, you know, those are viable options. Um, a lot of them are doing, if you already have your certificate, a lot of them are doing online master's degrees, but you have to have your certificate first. Um, you can look into those. <laughs> uh, so what do you need to keep the credential active? Um, AMS just started something where you have to have a certain amount of professional development hours per year. I don't know what any other training center has. Um, and I don't remember the exact number for AMS. So I'm not going to say it and be wrong. I think I know what it is, but I'm not going to guess right now. <laughs> but, you know, something worth looking at. Um, do you want, uh, 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 does what you want help you advance your future goals? So, you know, if your job is to um, stay in one town and maybe even open your own Montessori school, maybe one training might be perfect for you if you want to stay there, you know, for the rest until you retire. 
but maybe you're like, oh man, in three years, we're moving out to Boston. Uh, so maybe you want to start contacting Montessori schools in Boston and saying, hey, what credentials do you take? Because it would be terrible to go ahead and spend thousands of dollars, get some credential that doesn't fit with the place you're going. It fits perfectly for where you are, but in three years, it's going to be no good. And you know, you're out $3,000. You can't sell this like a used car. You can't sell the credential like on Craigslist. Um, so, you know, these long-term goals are things you really have to just consider as well, um, as far as you know, what your actual training needs are. Um, one to really consider that might be a big deal with between considering AMS and AMI is the schedule. Um, you know, different training programs have different schedules and you might be, and you might look at this AMS program that's a really, I'm telling you, it's hard. It's a, a I don't, I've never done it, but I know people who have. It's like an in, intensive summer course where they just pack all the training and classes into one summer. Um, they're, they're a lot of work. They're a headache. They're tough. Um, but, you know, you, you do get it all done in one summer. One of my good friends just did that a couple of years ago and he was, he was tired about it, but he came back with so much knowledge when he came back to work in the fall. Uh, maybe you want a university, maybe you want to get a degree in Montessori and get your certificate in Montessori. One nice thing with universities is you also tend to get um, state certified. They'll help you with state certification and getting that through. Um, so, you know, that's another option. Um, do you want to do it on the weekends all year, your training classes? That's what I did. Um, and another thing to look at is internship. Um, how much time after your training class do you actually spend in the classroom? Um, I don't know what AMS, uh, I, excuse me, I don't know what AMI offers. I do know that AMS has a much longer internship. Now that can be either a great thing because you're spending this, all this time in the classroom. You know, you're, you're going from, you know, the beginning of the year to the end of the year, usually, and you're spending it in the classroom. Um, and you're getting to know the parents. You're, you, you actually have to, you know, write out all the, you know, do a checklist of writing out all the presentations you've given and, you know, have the other teachers sign off on it. You um, have to have meetings with parents. I mean, they, they, during the internship with AMS, they really teach you like you are one of the teachers in the class. Um, to, I mean, the head teacher is still in charge, but you get a lot of the responsibility in the classroom. Um, I don't know about AMI's training. I, 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 and so I'm going to back out of that. But that's something you do want to ask at whatever teacher training program you do is to get this credential. What's the internship like? Now, the downside to that is you have to spend a lot of time in that internship time, right? And will it be paid? Will it be unpaid? It's, you know, it's really up to the school that you're working at. Um, I was lucky enough to find a paid internship. My mom's, when she got her credential, was unpaid. Um, so it's, I, I think it was. I think she, I remember her telling that story. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it just comes down to what your own needs are. Maybe you have a family and you can't do a paid, unpaid internship for a full year and you need something shorter. You know, that's another thing to tick off in whatever box you have to think about. I, like I said, I'm not going to, I said, I'm going to tell you what's when the right one for you. <laughs> really, I'm telling you all these questions to think about. Um, I'm just giving you a clearer idea of what to think about so that when you do go looking out for these, you won't just start going onto the Facebook comment section because that can be a nightmare. Um, so you want to see all the different options and find what's best for your life. And, you know, it, I, I'm going to tell you, whatever you choose, it will be a big sacrifice. It's going to be a big time and money and, you know, sacrifice and energy and, um, but you will learn from it. Um, number five thing to consider is your inspiration. Um, you know, a picture of Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers gave a talk at the AMS conference years ago, and I wasn't there, but I bought a copy of it to listen to it. It's one of the best talks ever. And uh, a man's such an inspiration, you know, um, as far as how he treats children and everything. So when I think of Montessori, I often think of, of how I want to 
go into the classroom in the morning, I'm often thinking of Mr. Rogers. Um, but inspiration here, I'm talking about the uh, teacher training program. Um, go, you know, go talk to the teacher training program, go see what they have to offer, see how much they inspire you to become a teacher. Uh, I, I hear stories all the time about my mom. Or it's like, oh, you're Beth Bronsel's uh, son. Yeah, yeah. And she'll be like, uh, yeah, we, um, yeah, I remember I walked into her office. I was crying. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And then my mom pulled out a sheet of paper, uh, you know, checked off what classes I was going to take that semester. <laughs> and I was left her office just knowing the path of my life for the next couple of years because um, she worked at a university. So, you know, they're talking the next three or four years when the, by the time they walked into her office. Um, but, uh, you know, people tell me all the time that, um, uh, how much my parents inspired them to do things. That's what you want out of your teacher education program. Uh, you know, you, you're going to get good at doing the paint tower. You know, if you're taught properly, you're going to do good at, you know, you're going to learn how to, um, do the math materials if you're ta taught properly. Um, but the real important thing is that inspiration of what the person thinks of the classroom and what the person thinks the important of the environment and the child and everything like that. That's what really is going to drive you through your training more than anything else. Um, and so it's not just about learning to teach. Um, it's really about a lifelong transformation. Someone who took a workshop I gave, I gave a language workshop on Montessori um, and she went ahead and got her AMS certificate a few years ago. And um, she messaged me one time. She's like, hey, can you just, can I come over to your classroom and just work with the sensorial materials with you? You know, because I just, she was taking her sensorial class. She wanted time to practice it, kind of perfect things and see how I do things. And so, she, you know, we were having lunch that day and she said, you know, I, I started taking Montessori to become a better teacher. And she's a single mother also. Um, so she said, and then I realized I'm taking it and becoming a better mother, better mother. Then she said, and then I realized I'm taking it to become a better person. It's not just the training and then you're done. Uh, let this be a lifetime thing for you. Let this be a lifetime of transformation. And uh, especially with the way you relate to the children, to the child. Um, and find a place that inspires you and your training, not just one that's not just one that's convenient. If you can find something that's perfectly convenient for every box that you want to check off and perfectly inspirational, that's perfect. I realize you're gonna to have to find a balance between the two. So um that's you know what I can't, you know, I can't give you the final decision. I could just tell you find that balance. <laughs> All right, so now that you know something new, you can finally say that you're thinking about something and you can finally say, I'm onto something. So check us out at I'm onto something.com. Notice the spelling of all that, but uh, check us out. Um, we have webinars, we have, um, we, have a, a, we have a great blog that I'm, I'm going to continue to update. We have uh, books that you can buy. Um, so. Uh, go ahead and get inspired on there and start to go page through it and say, hey, I'm on to something. Dot com. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, as always, my email and uh, links with other information is right below this video. So uh, feel free to check it out and we'll catch you guys later on our next video. Thank you. <laughs>